In section one of chapter one, we're going to be going over graphing point slope form, which is the review from algebra one, but it is incredibly, imperatively important that we understand this element moving forward in algebra two, because there's going to be an element that we utilize a lot that stems from this. So yeah, it's a good bit of review, but it also leads into our next topic. So first, I want to review what the heck point slope form is. How do we write it? What's the definition? Like if you just Googled point slope form, what would pop up? Well, there's actually two ways of writing it. I'm going to show both. There's the one that you would Google. If you Google point slope form, it would type out, oh, it's just y minus y1 equals m times the quantity of x minus x sub 1 where that equation, the reason it's called point-slope form, is because by looking at a problem written in this format, we can tell two critical pieces of information from it. We can tell a random point on the line and the slope, hence why it's called point-slope form, because looking at it tells you the point and the slope. <clears throat> the point, or the coordinate, will be at x sub 1 comma y sub 1. And then the slope, well, that's just the m value. There is another way of writing this that I do want to showcase because it'll be much more imperative that you are familiar with this format going forward into more complex variations of functions. <clears throat> The other way of writing this is y minus k is equal to m times the quantity of x minus h. So all I did is replace the x1 and the y1 with h and k. I'm just using different variables. The reason I'm showcasing this is when we go into more complex topics, they tend to use h's and k's. But I want to showcase this to make sure that you bridge the understanding that what we're doing today with these linear functions is going to be the exact same thing we're going to do with these more complex functions in a little bit. So again, it tells us two informations, or informations, it tells us two bits of information. It tells us a point, which in this format will be h comma k. And it tells us the slope. And the slope is still m. So let's run through an example. I have y minus 2 equals 3 over 4 times the quantity of x plus 1. Just by looking at that equation and understanding point slope form, I know a point on the line and I know the slope of the line. Just by looking at the equation. I don't even need to do much math. I just look at it and go, like, oh, I can see it. The point or the coordinate will be at negative 2, or sorry, 2 for my y value, and it'll be at negative 1 for my x value. Because remember, the format says that we have to subtract the values. It's x minus x sub 1. So if this is a plus sign, we have to ask ourselves, what are we actually subtracting from the x? We're subtracting a negative 1. The quick and easy way of getting around that is you just take the symbol that's from the equation and you flip it. So this negative 2 turns into a positive 2. The positive 2 turns into, or sorry, the positive 1 turns into a negative 1. And then lastly, the slope. The slope is the number that is written in front of the parentheses. And the slope is 3 over 4. The top number tells you how you move vertically. That's up and down. The bottom number tells you how you move horizontally. That's left and right. Positive means up. Negative means down. And then for the denominator, positive means right. Negative means left. So for this problem, I know it's going to go up 3 and right 4. So now let's go from this information to the graph. Our point is negative 1, 2. So we're going to go left 1, up 2. There's our first dot. Second dot. 
is generated by using the slope of going up three, right four. So up one, two, three, right one, two, three, four. This is my next stop. Right here. We could generate more coordinates by continuing the pattern from the slope. Up three, right four again. There's not enough space for me to go another up three, right four, but I could go down three and left four. The more dots you have, the easier the graph of the line will be. Now we're going to do the exact same process again. I'm just going to reverse it. I'm now going to give the slope and the coordinate. We're going to create the graph, and we're going to generate the equation. It's the same problem. We just have a different starting point. So in problem number one, I have the slope is equal to negative 2, and the point is 4, 1. So let's deal with the point first. We typically do that first. So positive 4, comma, positive 1 means we're going to go right 4 and then up 1, which is right here. <clears throat> then my slope is negative 2. Now, sometimes this trips people up because this is the one time math students actually want fractions is with slopes. Because they say, OK, negative 2, that means down 2, but I don't know how to move left and right. Any integer is the same thing as that integer over 1. So my slope is negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to go down 2, right 1. Bit of advice. I know you've probably gotten used to saying this. Do not use the words over. A lot of students, when they're talking about slope, they say, oh, down 2 over 1. Over does not tell me direction. Over could mean left or right. Be specific in your verbiage. It is down to right one, because there is a way to go to the left. You just have to make that number negative. So start practicing that now before it's it too complicated. So from that point, I'm going to go down to right one. That's my next stop. Down to right one, down to right one, down to right one, down to right one. You could also go up to left one, up to left one. You could keep doing that over and over again, but ultimately you get that linear graph. And now we need to do the final process of generating an equation. And you have to do it in point slope form. I don't care if you prefer slope intercept form. We're practicing point slope. So this is going to be y minus the y value of our coordinate. So it's y minus the 1 equals the slope. The slope is the number that is negative 2. So it's just going to be negative 2. You could write negative 2 over 1 if you wanted, but it's superfluous. That division of 1 doesn't do anything algebraically. So when we're doing the algebra side, the written of the equation side, we don't have to write it. If you do, it's not technically wrong. Just mathematicians are going to give you a weird look. And then it'll be x minus the x value of the coordinate, which is 4. And we are done. Problem number 2. I'm going to go left 8 and up 7. Start thinking ahead. Maybe you can find out the hiccup that this problem is going to present. I'm going to go left 8 and up 7. So left 8, up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. OK, there's my first dot. That's from the coordinate. Left 8, up 7. And then, according to my slope, I'm going to go up 6, right 5. Think in your head why that's an issue. Sometimes with graphs, you need to take a step back. And before you just jump right into it, like, I got a point, got a slope, just going to start going at the problem. You need to ask yourself, are you going to have enough space? This problem, we don't have enough space if every single one of my boxes is a jump of one unit. So I should have started realizing that that was going to happen and said, you know what? I'm going to make each one of these a jump of two. That means instead of going up to 10 and right to 10, it's going to go up to 20 and right to 20. Now I'm going to go left, 8, up, 7, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 7. It's like right around there. 2, 4, 6, 8. It's like right around there. And then I'd have to use my slope of up, 6, right, 5. 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 5. Again, also not perfect, but it's another way of actually representing this. So 
that's how the graphs can be a little tricky. Here's the other twist. Not much of a twist. I think you guys would be able to grasp it, but I still want to present it. Now I need to write the equation. It's going to be y minus the y value of my coordinate, which is the 7, equals the slope, which is 6 over 5, times the quantity of x minus the x value of my coordinate, which is negative 8. I do not want you to write it in this format. This is correct, it's just not simplified enough. Because we don't often think or write about subtracting negatives. What do we do when we subtract a negative? We add. So instead of minus a negative 8, we're just going to do plus 8. 